Anthony Davis will be extension eligible tomorrow. Davis is coming off of a regular season in which he averaged almost 26 points per game for L.A. He played all 16 playoff games while averaging 22 and 14 for the Lakers. Now joining us, NBA front office insider Bobby Marks. Bobby, let's start by diving into the details of this extension. What could A.D. get now versus what could happen if he waits? Yeah, he's extension eligible starting on Friday for three years, $169 million. That extension would start in the 2025-26 years. Davis has two years left on his contract. If he decided to wait, he can sign up until October 23rd. That Jalen Brown number would be staring at him, potentially five years, $304 million if he declined that early termination option. If he signs the team that had cap space, potentially four years, $214 million. So Davis has a decision to make as far as to take the guaranteed money now or wait until certainly next offseason and become an unrestricted free agent. Okay, let's bring some more squad in here. Ramona Shelburne is joining us now. Chanae and Wendy are also here. Ramona, I'm going to start with you. What mm -hmm. should the urgency be for the Lakers to get an extension done? Oh, they need to try to get this extension done because, as Bobby just mentioned, this is a bargain for them. If they get him signed early, they actually save money in the long run because he has an ETO, not a player option. I heard all about this on the Hoop Collective podcast. It's very complicated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the details matter here, and I think for the Lakers, it's advantageous for them because you have to think about team building. This is a team that they took away some of their future flexibility by signing Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves, Gabe Vincent, for beyond next season. And so now they're in a position where you've got to lock in that start because we don't know what LeBron James's plans are after this season. Ramona mentioned the Hoop Collective. Wendy, you talked about this a lot on your podcast. Uh, how has David Davis handled these negotiations in the past? Yeah, that's an important thing to pay attention to, Christine. So the contract that he signed now, he signed in 2020. And at that time, he had an option that he could have gone two different ways with his contract. He could have signed for one year, and then after one year, he could have signed for a lot more money. Mm -hmm. Or he could have signed for the full five years to get maximum protection. We know he's had a lot of injuries in his career. He took quite a bit of time to think about that. He spent, as I recall, you know, seven to ten days thinking about the offer. And at the end of the day... He took the guaranteed five-year contract. He didn't want the risk of one year. And that's important to realize here. He can be a free agent next summer. And that's why the Lakers need to get this done. As Ramona said, it puts them in better financial stead to do this now. It's a bit, it's a bit better deal for them. But they don't want Anthony Davis messing with free agency. They don't want that hanging over their head as they go throughout the season. And if Anthony Davis makes a decision and prioritizes long-term security over, you know, rolling the dice over one year, he might be interested in doing that now. And I will say this. The Lakers have had a lot of attention for what they've done this summer. And they've done a really good job stabilizing their roster and adding some talent. But this, this is the most important thing for Rob Palenka this summer. To get Anthony Davis locked up so you don't have any concerns going forward. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think more of the humanity, uh, you know, humanity perspective, when you're a player that has dealt with Knicks and Knacks, I know this personally, the one thing you really want is that security. You want that long term. You want to feel like this is home. This is who I want to build with, especially at this point in your career, because he is in his prime. He is trying to be more available for games. And I think that type of security is super, super important. And the reason why I think Lakers fans feel maybe like, oh, like, do we want to do this? Because right. we know he may or may not be available at X, Y, or Z point of the year. The reality is when AD scores 25 points or more, the Lakers won 65% of their game. They had a 20 and 11 record. Now, yeah, he may miss 10 or so in a stretch. He may miss five or so. But still, if he's able to play when it matters most, you have a great shot at being, you know, a, a good team. And we saw that especially at the end of last year. So that security from, like, the player perspective, but also knowing that he is still valuable. And as Wendy and Ramona have astutely said, mm -hmm. he has value. Like, you don't want to roll the dice and see what happens because this is a time when you have LeBron James and you want to make things shake. Brian, do you agree with what Chanae just said? Yeah, I also think because, let's just be honest here, there's uncertainty with LeBron. Yep. We don't know where he's going to be a year from now. He may even retire a year from now. You don't want Anthony Davis going into free agency, you know, even if it's to potentially get more money, with uncertainty with LeBron. 
you want to have Anthony Davis as a core part of your team, and it just makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense from a stability standpoint to get it done. I know that people can nitpick with Anthony Davis. The Lakers were in the Western Conference Finals largely because of what this guy did at the defensive end, and their, their season coming up, yeah, there's a lot of guys contributing. You need LeBron to be healthy. You need Austin Reeves to come back. You need some of the new guys to play well. But you got to have Anthony Davis as your defensive center and your defensive core, and that's going to be the case well into the future, which is why they need to get this done. Well, guys, I also think when you look at where Anthony Davis is right now, he is playing on a below-max contract. Just based on where the growth of yeah. the cap is, he is at a 30% number here, and they have him on a bargain. And I think from, from Davis' perspective, the last time he played 65 games or more was in 2017-18. And whenever anyone dangles $169 million in front of you at his age and based on his injury history, I think you have to take it. And I know the lore of $300 million potentially could be there, but that is certainly playing Russian roulette as far as what his future could hold. Bobby, are you, I'm curious, though. Do you think the Lakers come with just this straight offer, or do they build in some protection for themselves yeah. in terms of games played, incentivizing how many it, 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 to get the full max based on games played or other kinds of performance clauses? I think you can, Ramona, and I think what would happen is that Anthony Davis would say, we'll see you next year and yeah. on July 1st in free agency, and we'll see if there's a team out there willing to offer $214 million or potentially more over four years. I think you kind of get a little bit cute. We certainly saw that last year with Kyrie, who yeah. certainly played it out when you get cute with these games protections. I understand it from the Lakers' perspective. $60 million in the last year of that extension is a big number, especially if Anthony Davis is the lone player on this roster if LeBron is elsewhere, you know, three or four years from now. The Kings go to the playoffs for the first time in 17 years. De'Aaron Fox, the bonus and the brothers are balling. And their offense is legit. They made the smart plays, the tough plays, the big baskets. They were well coached. Mike Brown is the coach of the year by a landslide. We ain't taking no shit from nobody. Trust me on that. They get easy shots really easily. Why don't we believe in them? Fourth quarter, Fox has been activated. Sabonis. Go ahead and light it. I think everybody's ready. That's right. Light the beam. DeMontis Sabonis balled out last season in his first full years with the Kings, putting up 19, 12, and 7 on 62% from the field. He also led the NBA with 65 double doubles, seven more than any other player. And we are so incredibly lucky to be joined by three-time All-Star Sacramento Kings big man, DeMontis Sabonis. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, uh, DeMontis, it is summertime. The living is easy, and I tend to stalk people on social media. I saw that your quote, 10,000 month pregnant, that's your wife's quote, not mine, uh, <laughs> wife, threw you a dinner party not too long ago. You also are in Napa Valley. You went on a nice date with her. Uh, it looks like you're living right now. So what is the most fun or coolest thing that you've done this summer? Most fun and coolest thing, um, just hanging out with uh, my wife and my family. Um, we got a little boy and uh, I actually just came from a swim class with him right here. So that's that's where I'm coming. Okay. okay, so I, I would like to mention that you also got a $217 million contract extension. That was probably a very cool thing that happened this summer as well, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Just, just a little money, a little money. Okay, so let's get to last season and you specifically before we talk about your team because you made your first all-NBA team. When you look back at last season, is there a moment that you're most proud of as an individual? Uh, I'm definitely proud of uh, this team, this uh, or organization, the coaching staff, everyone, uh, what the city's been through and that we can put them back on the map. Um, everyone saw what it did to the city. I mean, on the road, we're, we're playing, we're about to win the game and the opposing fans are chanting like the beam. So it's just, it, it was a really special year for sure, you know, and uh, we just got to use this as motivation to keep building. Yeah, you said it was a special year. Your team took the entire world by storm last season. You ended a 16-year playoff drought. You were a three seed, but then you, of course, fell short in that game uh, seven series with the Warriors. What did you as a team learn from that series? I think we learned a lot. You know, I think it was the right uh, stepping, uh, stepping uh, stool for, 
for us to keep moving forward. We played against the defending champs, you know, their their dynasty, and um, just learning from every player there how they carry themselves, how they prepare, how they came in ready for every game, home, on the road. Uh, it really opened our eyes, you know. Uh, it was it was a first time for a lot of us out there, and just to follow that blueprint of what they did because um, they've been amazing for a long time. So uh, I think it was a good test, and now we got to put that put that to work this this year. Uh, okay, so obviously I mentioned the fact that you took the entire world by storm. Was there a single moment uh, that you realized that this team was different? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of felt it during in the training camp. Um, obviously, it's funny to say now, but um, we really connected, really connected on the offensive end, uh, and we just had this flow going, and it was a lot of new guys hadn't been together, and we only knew as the season went on we, we were only going to get better. And Mike Brown and his staff, you know, did a, did a great job of just – keeping us on our heels, you know, uh, we couldn't relax one, one second, you know, he would call a timeout with 20 seconds into the game um, on film, call everyone out, you know, so there was no time to relax and uh, we just kept pushing each other uh, to, to, to be better every day. Was there a single thing that clicked when you guys realized what that connection was and what that needed to look like moving forward? I don't know. I really feel like uh, it was off the court, uh, our relationships and uh, the bond we had off the court was, was special, you know, so obviously it translated to, to the court. Yeah. We hung out, we kept for each other, so uh, I feel like that really helped. We were down in a lot of games, you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, Fox comes out and wins the game for us. Um, everyone did their part, but I feel like once we could win those little tests, those little battles, um, that was preparing us for something bigger. Yeah, we can definitely see how that translates on the court for sure. Uh, as you look to this next upcoming season, what are the expectations for you guys in the locker room? Um, our expectations, knowing our coaching staff and our players, you know, they're they're going to be high. And um, for everyone else, too, you know, this year we caught everyone by surprise, but everyone's going to expect us to be at a certain level. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.